This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is the last in a series of lectures on budgeting. And if you've been following me through the notes, you'll see we're now up to a section headed up behavioural aspects. Um, now, I want to highlight the most important bits here. Uh, I'm not going to read every line to you. But it is something the examiner does like asking. I mean, several budgeting questions in the exam, in fact, most budgeting questions she's had in section C, have uh, been um, almost entirely, if not completely, written. Um, and so do make sure you're clear about it. The first thing, and it's how, how the managers, how the staff react to the budget process, the effect it has on people. Um, and one, an important one, is the first one participation. You'll see top down and bottom up budgeting. Top down is where it's top management, me in charge, does the budgets for everything and then gives it to the junior managers. So, you know, I've got managers in charge of production, in charge of buying materials, in charge of human resources. I'll do the budgets and then I'll call them in and I'll say, here is your budget. So essentially that's what it is. They're prepared by top management. I won't carry on the sentence because it is actually typed there. The alternative approach is bottom up. And with bottom up, instead of me preparing the budgets, again, it is tight there, but I get my managers to prepare their own. I say to um, production, you know, do a budget for your department, uh, sales, do a budget for your department, human resources, and so on. So the, well, I'll write just that one sentence, the managers prepare the budgets. And it's my job at top management to collect them in, make sure they coordinate, you know, to make sure we're budgeting on there enough materials for the budgeted production, something I said in the very first lecture. So I make sure they coordinate and I make sure they're realistic. And it's my job uh, to put them together uh, and to approve them. So those are the two approaches. Um, Top-down used to be by far the most common. These days, bottom-up is regarded as much better. And the advantage of uh, bottom-up is that managers will be much more motivated You know, if you've been involved in preparing the budgets, you're likely to regard them as uh, more achievable, uh, you'll be more motivated, a matter of pride, you want to do better, and so on. Whereas if I simply give you a budget, uh, you're not being treated like a manager. However, the danger with bottom-up, or the problem, potential problem, is because managers aren't stupid. They know you're being measured on how well you perform against budgets. So you may say, oh, I'm doing a materials budget. I think we need $10,000. I'll put in the budget 11,000. Because uh, you know, if, if top management accept 11,000, then I know I'll definitely do better and get my bonus. But uh, we call that budget padding. And so, uh, danger, managers budget more than needed. Uh, which I say, budget padding. Uh, but it's up uh, to me, uh, you know, I'm the person who reviews the budgets, it's up to me to be aware that this might happen. And so I've got to challenge the managers and say, you know, why do you need so much? And do uh, as best I can to make sure that what they're budgeting is realistic and that they're not budgeting more. 
uh, 7.2, I really talked about target setting and motivation. Although the targets to managers are purely financial targets. You know, we want them to spend, the, the less they spend, the better, that sort of thing. Uh, but we also want to give them targets to make sure they're doing the job well. Um, targets that they're increasing, the sales department, that they're increasing sales, um, that sort of thing. That, uh, teachers, that not only do I want them to be um, used efficiently, you know, get lots of students in the room, but at the same time, I want them to be doing good teaching. Give them targets, or if you get a better pass rate from your students, perhaps we'll reward you. So they need targets, uh, as I've written there. If you set them really difficult targets, they'll give up trying. It's demotivating. Oh, I can never possibly achieve that if they don't try. If they're too easy targets, then they don't need to try very hard. So, you know, it, you want to make them achievable targets. But ones you have to work for. And good targets you should agree in advance. It should be things the individual can control. But be able to measure whether they've done well or badly. Have appropriate rewards, bonuses and things, and penalties. And choose carefully, make sure they're targets. You're asking them to do things which are good for the company as a whole. Uh, responsibility accounting. Separates revenues, costs, separate responsibility. I don't need to say anything there, read it. And similarly, management by objectives. Make sure there are objectives right the way through the business. So, not a lot there, but be aware, you know, it, it is a problem. I'll give you one other problem that um, a girl I know had. People don't understand budgets. Um, a friend of mine works for um, the municipality in the city, uh, a city in England, you know, the, well, the council, the municipality. And in their budget, it's a budget for flowers. I can't, I can't remember the figure she told me. Let's suppose it's $100 a month for flowers in the office. And it was coming to the end of the year, November or something, and they realised they'd not been spending the full $100 a month. And so they thought, oh, right, we'll go and spend what's left. And so they spent a huge amount, you know, they'd only be spending $50 a month or something, so they got all this spare money, and the office was piled high with flowers. Well, that's completely mad. You know, some people think the budget, ah, that's what we're supposed to spend. It isn't at all. The budget should be a target. We want them to spend less, not more. But that's educating people. Educating people. Why are we doing the budgets? Rewarding people, motivating people to spend less. But you see, part of their thinking is, $400 a month, that's 1200 a year. If we only spend 600, then next year we'll only budget 600. So it's an example of a behavioural. Okay. Finally, one thing that's not in these notes, and I'm not going to lecture on, is something called beyond budgeting. Now, there is a, a separate note you can download on the website about this. Uh, it's a full note, and so it explains it, which is why I'm not going to give a full lecture. Just let me tell you very briefly what this is getting at. It's no numbers. People have started to ask, why do we bother doing budgets? I know I went through that list right at the beginning. But, you know, budgets... It's costing money to prepare them. It takes time and therefore costs, which is fine if we're actually benefiting. But you know, you don't spend money for no reason. Uh, budgets are never going to be correct. You cannot forecast accurately. Millions of things go wrong. Budgets always become out of date. It's only really useful. All right, we use them for control. I mean, it's um, there's obvious logic. 
you know, do our flex budget and compare, but again, things go out of date, you know, whatever. And so people are saying, well, do we really get that much benefit from it? All right, we want people to be tar have targets. We want people to be motivated. We want ways of measuring people. But what about this? Instead of measuring them against a budget, which is probably wrong anyway, wouldn't it be better to measure them against other people doing similar work? For instance, suppose you're a bank where we've got lots of separate offices and they're all doing the same thing. Well, why don't we measure the offices against each other? And the office is doing better, get rewarded. The office is doing worse, or the managers uh, don't get rewarded. But isn't that much more realistic or sensible than comparing them against either last year or against a budget which it's meaningless. Now, it's not always easy to achieve, obviously, but that's what beyond budgeting is. Consider not doing budgets at all, but finding other ways. Compare departments, perhaps even come to an arrangement with another company. And compare a manager in your company with the performance of a manager doing the same sort of work in another company. So that's basically what it is. But do, do read the note. As I say, there's no numbers involved. And if it is asked, it's not going to be 20 marks. But um, there certainly could be mention of it. Okay, uh, now there were very few numbers in that chapter. And the numbers there were were really F2 revision. In the next chapter, quantitative techniques, there's one particular area which technically falls within budgets and full learning curves. But anyway, I'll explain all that when we come to um, the next set of lectures.